hello welcome welcome to day 34 of our bible in a year challenge my name is sandra i'm going to be your host for today welcome we are committed to reading and fellowshipping with god's word every single day of this year 2024 please kindly go ahead right now subscribe to my youtube channel follow me on facebook on instagram and on tiktok let's get started let's say a word of prayer dear heavenly father as we gather once again to delve into your word, we come before your presence with gratitude and reverence. Thank you for the privilege of studying your scriptures day by day, seeking your wisdom and growing in our faith. Lord, we ask for your guidance and illumination as we explore the passages set before us today. Open our hearts and minds to receive the lessons you have prepared for us in your word may your holy spirit be our teacher revealing the truths and insights we you want us to grasp help us to apply the lessons we learn in our daily lives that we may walk in your ways and grow in our relationship with you may the scriptures inspire us encourage us and equip us to live as faithful followers of christ we commit this time of reading and reflection to you trusting that your word will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path in jesus name we pray amen day 34 february 3rd 2024 365 days bible reading old testament job 30 job 31 job 32 new testament matthew 22 15 to 46 psalms and proverbs psalm 18 verse 16 to 24 old testament niv version job 31 to 31 but now they mock me men younger than i whose fathers i have i would have disdained to put with my sheep dogs of what use was the strength of their hands to me since their vigor had gone from them. Haggard from want and hunger, they roamed the parched land in desolate wastelands at night. In the brush, they gathered salt herbs, and their food was the root of the broom brush. They were banished from human society, shouted at as if they were thieves. They were forced to live in the dry stream beds, among the rocks and in holes in the ground. They braided among the bushes and huddled in the undergrowth. A base and nameless brood, they were driven out of the land. And now those young men mock me in song. I have become a byword among them. They detest me and keep their distance. They do not hesitate to spit in my face. Now that God has unstrung my bow and afflicted me, they threw off restraint in my presence. On my right, the tribe attacks. They lay snares for my feet. They build their siege rams against me. They break up my road. They succeed in destroying me. No one can help him, they say. They advance as though a gaping bridge amid the ruins they come rolling in. Terrors overwhelm me. My dignity is driven away as by the wind. My safety vanishes like a cloud. And now my life ebbs away. Days of suffering grip me. Night pierces my bones. My knowing pains never rest. In his great power, God becomes like clothing to me. He binds me like the neck of my garment. He throws me into the mud and I am reduced to dust and ashes. I cry out to you, God, but you do not answer. I stand up, but you merely look at me. You turn on me ruthlessly. With the might of your hand, you attack me. You snatch me up and drive me before the wind. You toss me about in the storm. I know you will bring me down to death, to the place appointed for all the living. Surely, no one lays a hand on a broken man when he cries for help in his distress have i not wept for those in trouble has not my soul grieved for the poor yet when i hoped for good evil came when i looked for light 
Then came darkness. The churning inside me never stops. Days of suffering confront me. I go about blackened, but not by the sun. I stand up in the assembly and cry for help. I have become a brother of jackals, a companion of owls. My skin grows black and peels. My body burns with fever. My lyre is turned to mourning and my pipe to the sound of wailing. Job 31 verse 1 to 40 I made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a young woman. For what is our lot from God above, our heritage from the Almighty on high? Is it not ruin for the wicked, disaster for those who do wrong? Does he not see my ways and count my every step? If I have walked with falsehood, all my foot has hurried after deceit. Let God weigh me in honest scales, and he will know that I am blameless. If my steps have turned from the path, if my heart has been led by my eyes, or if my hands have been defiled, then may others eat what I have sown, and may my crops be uprooted. If my heart has been enticed by a woman, or if I have lurked at my neighbor's door, then may my wife grind another man's grain, and may other men sleep with her. For that would have been wicked, a sin to be judged. It is a fire that burns to destruction. It would have uprooted my harvest. If I have denied justice to any of my servants, whether male or female, when they had their grievance against me, what will I do when God confronts me? What will I answer when he called to account? Did not he who made me in the womb make them? Did not the same one form us both without our mothers? If I have denied the desires of the poor, or let the eyes of the widow grow weary, if I have kept my bread to myself, not sharing it with the fatherless, but from my youth I read them as a father would, and from my birth I guided the widow, if I have seen anyone perishing for lack of clothing or the needy without garments, and their hearts did not bless me for warming them with the fleas from my sheep, if I have raised my hand against the fatherless, knowing that I had influence in court, then let my arm fall from the shoulder, let it be broken off the joint, for I dreaded destruction from God, and for fear of his splendor I could not do such things. If I have put my trust in gold or set to pure gold, you are my security. If I have rejoiced over my great wealth, the fortune my hands have gained. If I have regarded the sun in its radiance or the moon moving in splendor, so that my heart was secretly enticed and my hand offered them a kiss of homage, then these also would be sin to be judged. For I would have been unfaithful to God on high. If I have rejoiced at my enemy's misfortune or gloated over the trouble that came to him, I have not allowed my mouth to sin by invoking a curse against their life. If those of my household have never said, Who has not been defiled? Who has not been filled with Job's meat? But no stranger had to spend the night in the street. For my door was always open to the traveller. If I have concealed my sin as people do by hiding my guilt in my heart, because I so feared the crowd and so dreaded the contempt of the clans, that I kept silent and would not go outside. Oh, that I had someone to hear me. I sign now my defence. Let the Almighty answer me. Let my accuser put his indictment in writing. Surely I would wear it on my shoulder. I would put it on like a crown. I would give him an account of every, of my every step. I would present it to him as a ruler. If my land cries out against me and all its furrows are wet with tears, if I have devoured its yield without payment or broken the spirit of its tenants, then let prayers come up inside of wheat and stink wheat instead of barley. The words of Job are ended. Job 32, 1-22 Elihu So, these three men stopped answering Job because he was righteous in his own eyes. 
But Elio, son of Barakel, the Buzite of the family of Ram, became very angry with Job for justifying himself rather than God. He was also angry with the three friends because they had found no way to refute Job and yet had condemned him. Now, Elihu had waited before speaking to Job because they were older than he. But when he saw that the three men had nothing more to say, his anger was aroused. So Elihu, son of Barakel the Buzite, said, I am young in years and you are old. That is why I was fearful, not daring to tell you what I know. I thought age should speak. Advanced years should teach wisdom, but it is a spirit in the person, the breath of the Almighty, that gives them understanding. It is not only the old who are wise, not only the aged who understand what is right. Therefore, I say, listen to me. I too will tell you what I know. I waited while you spoke. I listened to your reasoning. While you were searching for words, I gave you my full attention but not one of you has proved job wrong none of you has answered his arguments do not say we have found wisdom let god not a man refute him but job has not marshaled his words against me and i will not answer him with your arguments they are dismayed and have no more to say words have filled them must I wait now that they are silent, now that they stand there with no reply? I too will have my say, I too will tell what I know, for I am full of words and the spirit within me compels me. Inside I am like a bottle of wine, like new wine skins ready to burst. I must speak and find relief, I must open my lips and reply. I will show no partiality, nor will I flatter anyone. For if I were skilled in flattery, my maker would soon take me away. New Testament NIV version, Matthew 22, verse 15 to 46, paying the imperial tax to Caesar. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said. We know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You are unswayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius and he asked them, Whose image is this? And whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, So, give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and went away. Marriage at the resurrection. That same day, the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to him with a question teacher they said moses told us that if a man dies without having children his brother must marry the widow and raise up offspring for him now there were seven brothers among us the first one married and died and since he had no children he left his wife to his brother the same thing happened to the second and third brother right on down to the seventh finally the woman died now then at the resurrection Whose wife would she be of the seven, since all of them were married to her? Jesus replied, You are in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. At the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. But about the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what God said to you? I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. When the crowds heard this, they were astonished at his teaching. The Greatest Commandment Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, what, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. 
All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Whose son is the Messiah? While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, What do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? The son of David, they replied. He said to them, How is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord? For he says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one could say a word in reply, and from that day, no one dared to ask him any more questions. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 18, 16 to 24. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemies. From my foes, they were were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. The Lord has dealt with me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he has rewarded me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord. I am not guilty of turning from my God. All his laws are before me. I have not turned away from his decrees. I have been blameless before him and have kept myself from sin. The Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Lessons learned from Job 30, Job 31, and Job 32. Human suffering and the search for answers. In Job's lamentation and his declaration of his innocence, we learn that suffering is a part of the human experience and sometimes it can be difficult to understand why it happens. Job's struggle reflects our own questions about suffering and the search for answers. Maintaining Integrity and Righteousness Job's commitment to maintaining his integrity and righteousness even in the face of suffering, teaches us the importance of living a life of moral and ethical uprightness regardless of our circumstances. The value of wisdom. In Job 32, we encounter Elihu, a young man, who emphasizes the importance of wisdom. This reminds us that seeking and valuing wisdom is essential in understanding the mysteries of life and God's ways. Lessons learned from Matthew 22, verse 15 to 46. The authority of Jesus. The encounters with the Pharisees and Sadducees in this passage highlight Jesus' authority and wisdom. We learn that Jesus is the ultimate authority on matters of faith and the scriptures. The greatest commandments. Jesus teaches us the two greatest commandments, to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind and to love our neighbor as ourselves. These commandments remind us of the centrality of love in our relationship with God and others. The Messiah's Identity Jesus asks the Pharisees about the identity of the Messiah, revealing that he is the promised Messiah. This passage emphasizes the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies in Jesus Lessons learned from Psalm 18, verse 16 to 24. God's deliverance. Psalm 18, verse 16 to 24 recounts God's deliverance of David from his enemies. It teaches us that God is our fortress, our refuge, and our deliverer in times of trouble. God's righteousness. The psalm emphasizes God's righteousness and faithfulness. We learn that we can trust in God's character and he rewards those who seek him with sincerity. Gratitude and praise. David's expressions of gratitude and praise remind us of the importance of thanking God for his goodness and salvation. These lessons invite us to reflect on the complexities of suffering, the pursuit of wisdom, the authority of Jesus, the significance of love, and the character of God as our refuge and deliverer. Faith declarations from Job 30, Job 31, and Job 32. Even in the midst of challenges and suffering, I declare my righteousness before God. I know that he hears my cries and I trust in his justice. 
I seek wisdom and understanding like Elihu, for I know that true wisdom comes from God. Faith Declarations from Matthew 22, 15-46 I confess that I love the Lord my God with all my heart, soul, and mind. I also love my neighbor as myself, for these are the greatest commandments. I declare that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of David, and my Lord. Faith declarations from Psalm 16, verse sorry, from Psalm 18, verse 16 to 24. I proclaim that God has delivered me from my strong enemies. He is my support and my salvation. I confess that I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Please, if you've been blessed by the scriptures and you would like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me, believing in your heart every single word you say. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations if you said this prayer. We are so excited to welcome you into God's family. Kindly go ahead right now. Send us an email. Let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new walk of faith. The email address is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. That is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. God bless you. Please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Aruleba. Thank you so much for being here again today. It's always a pleasure having you here. I look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow. Have a blessed day today. I love you. Bye.